And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Stocks, episode number 117, building a portfolio through accumulation with a $20,000 account. So that's what we'll cover here in this section. Before we get started, I think most of you know this, but all investment theories, concepts that we cover here in this uh, module or any other videos that I share with you is obviously for uh, theoretical purposes and illustrative purposes only. It's not any investment specific advice simply because you might be watching this video at some later date and time or your investment risk tolerance might be different. So again, uh, contact your financial advisor before placing any trades. There could be a lot of risks involved with trading and investing. So in any case, I think most of you guys are smart enough to know that. So let's move forward. All right, quick little news, uh, free live classes for newsletter members and subscribers are online and available. So be sure to check out the tradersfly.com website. Now, when you get there, just go to the live classes right at the top and you'll see there's a somewhat a tentative calendar. And of course, some of them are for newsletter subscribers. So if you're on the newsletter list, you can get access to some of the free live classes that we do. The other thing is that we've done a discount on video classes for previous members. So if you're looking for uh, a membership plan to get access to some of the other classes, what you can do is head on over to the members membership plan section and then scroll down. Now, the current membership is $49 a month. If you've been a member for much longer, there is a slight little discount that's running for just a short time period. So just log into the website and you'll see that right in your account. As far as the remaining news, uh, I'm looking to focus more so on the live classes and webinars this month because we're gonna test out some things, see how things go with the flow if everybody likes it. Uh, then probably in March, which will give me about a month or two to plan for it, March, maybe April, maybe May, but I'm looking to do it around March, April timeframe to do a live options trading webinar uh, course for retirement strategies or just building upon trading options in a real world environment. And the class would be anywhere between uh, four to six weeks long, probably two sessions per week. Uh, and it would just take you through a couple of trades in options, trading some uh, retirement based strategies for verticals. So that'll be coming up here in March timeframe. And I'll give you some uh, further news insight before that class is live. So that way you can register ahead of time. It would be a paid class uh, again, but it'll be a very, very detailed class and showing you exactly step by step putting on live trades in live markets. And that way you get to follow along with me and uh, see how the process goes to building up your account. In either case, let's go into episode 117, building a portfolio through accumulation with a $20,000 account. And I chose a $20,000 account simply because it's a good little average uh, account that I think most people are starting with when they're just getting into trading or they're looking to invest. And it's one of those that also is difficult to build up. It's a lot more difficult to build up a smaller account than it is to take a larger account and you know make $20,000 from a million dollars than it is to take $20,000 and build it into a $30,000 account because, all right, so first things first, let's take a look at some of the things that we can really actually control in the markets. And uh, in part, also some of the things that go along with uh, doing a trade. So the first thing is time, okay? And when we look at time, it's, it's really something that goes this way. Um, infinitely really for some people they look at it more forward directional moving other people look at it left to right uh, just for illustrative purposes I'm going to use left to right just because it's easier so your investment timeline or time horizon is going to be finite meaning it's going to have a starting point and an ending point okay you're, you're going to have an ending point now this ending point can be determined based on the price movement or based on the success of your trade or just based on the life of you doing investments, meaning once you hit, let's say, a certain age, you might stop at some point. So in either case, there is a stopping point. Um, now, this initial point, this is your starting point, obviously, from when you're, you could say, doing research to get into the trade, but ultimately from when you put on that first trade. Now, 
when we go into investments, there's some risks that are attached to it. And number one, of course, is the price risk, which is pretty heavy, but that dictates within time. As we look into time, initially when we put on that first trade, we really have very minimal price risk when you really think about it, because the moment you put on the trade, that trade is barely moving. But as we continue moving through this time frame, that's when the risk starts to happen. So you have to start looking at things through time. And if you've had a trouble with this, looking at a finite example, then maybe this will help. So anyways, as you start looking at this, you have to break this apart. And one of the ways to do this is through accumulation. And when you look at time, and you look at accumulation, you can really reduce your risk because in the end it comes down to the risk that you have. Okay, you can reduce that risk through accumulation over time. So your starting point, your first trade might be right here. Okay, then as you continue moving through time, okay, your second trade might be over here, and then your third trade might be over here. So after you get into three full trades, let's say you put on three accumulations, then you have your full position. But this really, as you start to look at it, is only about half or a third of your whole full trade. Because remember, the whole trade goes through all the way. This would be 100% all the way over here. This would be zero. So we might only get into the 30% of completion when we finalize the trade. The next part of that trade could be, okay, what is the next part? Profit taking. It could be profit taking or managing. And then the remaining part is exiting, okay? So this is uh, where we get through a full trade and most people don't think about it that way. So if you start breaking things down in segments, okay, so this is a starting point. This is our stopping point, okay? The beginning part is to get into the trade. Okay, so you're getting into the trade. The next part is managing, okay, so you manage, or you take your profits, okay, it's part of profit taking, but it's really managing, it could be also adjustments, depending on what you're doing, but to keep things simple, managing, adjusting, some profit taking, and then the final part is exiting. Now, uh, you could also exit through uh, doing it in stages, a stair-step pattern, which is kind of like accumulation, which we'll get into. But our main focus right now is going to be talking about this first part, which is getting into the trade and accumulation. And I find if you do this part really well, and if you get into the trade at the right time and you do it with lowering that risk, it saves you a little bit, even if you're not as good at managing or not as good at exiting, because you got in at the right time. Now, I think managing and adjusting your positions is also one really important part. Um, and then if you exit even too soon, you should be okay. So if you get these two parts down, then you should be fairly good within your trades. If you, uh, you know, just get the getting in part, then it'll set you up to be able to take the profits, even if you take the profits at not the most optimal times. So. Our main focus right now is going to be this getting in part. I'm gonna show you if you will be patient with me about how this can work out for you at how you can break apart the time at getting in to reduce your risk. So that's my goal. So we're gonna look at different time frames so that you can get into the trades by reducing that risk and then managing it. I'm gonna give you some tips on that but ultimately that's a whole different ball game. So let's take a look at some charts. And again, we're looking at a $20,000 account to start with because it's just a nice uh, little number. And if we take a look at Facebook right here, you can see I'm looking at pretty much a daily graph and you can tell it's a daily graph because of the icon indicator right there. And I'm looking at it from about the June time frame all the way till December, January right now. And you can see the stock has went up and then pulled back a little, little sideways action. So that's overall our movement. Now, if I take this out onto a longer time frame, this is a weekly, which means every tick is a week. You can see we have some pullbacks down and the stock's kind of been heading higher most of the time. And now we've got a little pullback right now. So. Looking at your time frame of investment really depends on when you're entering this stock chart and the length of your investment. You see, 
If you were a person who was looking to just hold for a few days and you got into the stock at the beginning when it first opened up, you most likely would have lost money, okay? Because your time horizon was just a few days and that stock was heading lower. Now, if you look at things on a longer term perspective, even if you got in at the beginning of this stock, wherever in the earlier parts and you had a much longer time view, over time this stock continued to head higher, as you can see. So if, however, the problem is always the risk that goes along with it, if you still had a long term perspective, but you got in it right here, you know, sometimes it's difficult to keep your cool or difficult to keep that mentality or psychology in check. So if you would have done the accumulation part, which is what we're going to get into here in a second, and you would have purchased a few shares, let's say right here, then again, a few shares over here and a few shares maybe over here in this area. So you're putting on a few shares from 2012, 2013 and 2014. It's a three year span across let's say a six seven year time horizon you would have been just fine because your average would be somewhere let's say around this area or around this area and that would put the stock price around 45 dollars that's your average right around 45 50 dollars of accumulating those shares and now you're at the 120 okay so a little pullback right now would not have hurt you that much however we don't always trade that way. We don't always know the length of time that we're going to be in a trade. So when you do accumulation, it can often help you reduce that risk. So let's look at some of the more difficult situations and let's just look at Facebook here uh, because it's one that we can easily relate to. So first off, if we look at the daily chart and let's just say we're looking at the daily and if my time horizon, my typical holding pattern of a stock is let's say a year, I might look at this chart of let's say a one or two year time frame. So now I come to the question of, well, how long do I want to accumulate these shares for? Okay, so if we take a look at the time to buy and we're looking at about a one year period, so this whole time frame is let's just say a year or in other words, 12 months. Okay, so that is what we're looking to do a full investment on, but our starting point is somewhere over here. So if we start here, what is our accumulation phase going to be? So our accumulation phase, let's say we could probably afford anywhere between a zero to four months to accumulate our position, okay? You don't have to get in it all in one day or all in two days or all in three days. I know it's exciting, but if you're looking to invest for about 12 months, you're probably, four months is good enough. You know, you could do it in two months, you could do it in one month. It's, it's totally up to you depending on how you're looking at the charts. But anywhere four or five months is also fine because you'll see here as we start playing with numbers, how this all plays out. And I'm just sharing with you exactly the way I think about things as I'm looking to do a trade. All right, so let's say we're taking a look at Facebook here and we want to build upon our accumulation and you know build upon our position through accumulation and we do it based on time. So you could do this a few different ways. Again, if you're looking at a year position, you could go ahead and accumulate everything you know right here but there's some problems that could go along with that and as I'll share with you here shortly. Uh, the other approach you could do is, you know, stagger it a bit, you know, do one per month or do one every three months. So you could do something like this or you could do something even further out, but then if you're holding patterns one year, you have some problems. So here's some situations that we'll go through and let's take a look at this as we accumulate the shares and positions. So here, First things first, we need to decide how many shares we can buy and how many stages of accumulation do we want. If we do it in thirds, we're kind of saving ourselves about 30% to 60% on a pullback because you're not getting in all at once. So the whole point really is that if you get in, let's say a large chunk or 30% of your position right here, you know, and the stocks pull back, so you have a pretty good pullback, you still can afford to buy a few more shares at the lower price level. So that's ultimately the goal. Um, whereas in, if you bought all the position all at once, let's say at this point in time, and you have a pullback, you're going to have some problems because now you have spent all your money 
and you're down for the count. So that's why you want to do accumulation and building out a portfolio in this way through accumulation. And you can do this with multiple stocks. And if you're doing it with multiple stocks, just take your portfolio and reduce it in half to do two stocks or reduce it in thirds if you're doing three stocks. And even if you want to be even more safe, what you could do is let's just say you had a $20,000 portfolio. You could say, okay, I'm only going to trade with 10,000. And if you want to trade two stocks, you would say, okay, I'm only going to trade 5,000 with uh, one stock and 5,000 with another stock. That'll give me my 10,000. Even though you have a $20,000 portfolio, which means you have $10,000 dollars remaining in cushion because you've used 10,000 and then you have 10,000 in cushion for adjustments and so on. So again, it just depends on how you structure the risk. So anyways, looking at our example, let's just do a few different variations and situations here. So as we uh, take a look here and um, get into our position right over, let's say right here, and I start building up my account, Okay, this puts me at about the $85 range. Okay, so $85 multiply times, okay, we multiply times, how many shares can we get? And on a $20,000 account divided by, actually let's just do, let's stick, it, stick with 20,000. Uh, $85, 235 shares. So if I wanna do this in thirds, Okay, 235 divided by three, we get about 78 shares. But if I wanna be a little more conservative, call it 50 shares to make matters simple. Okay, so here 85 times 50 shares. So that gives me uh, $4,250 right here on this accumulation part. Okay, stock then pulls back a little bit here and then continues moving. So again, let's say I go wait another month or two and I do a second accumulation over here. So my next accumulation here is right around 87, call it $90 just for simplicity's sake. So $90 times, again, let's just do 50 shares again because we're still in the same price range and level just to give you uh, perspective since we budgeted conservatively we get ninety dollars times fifty dollars a share you get four four thousand um, five hundred dollars so again now we're up to about eight thousand seven hundred fifty uh, dollars in our spending capital now what happens is a little bit interesting so here you can see we're fairly profitable right here at this point but then the stock pulls back a bit and this creates a really nice opportunity for you to buy some more shares. Because remember, your holding time is about a year, maybe two years, year and a half. So somewhere around that range. So again, you're able to get the stock at, let's say, $80, $80 $82, call it $80, $82. Um, and again, we'll do 50 shares just to make calculations simple. Uh, obviously, you can budget accordingly and, and play with the numbers, but I'm keeping it 50 just to make the math simple, okay? So again, 50 shares times $82. So now I get $4,100. So in total, if I add these numbers up, so I have 4,500, I have 4,250, and I have 4,100. So in total, so what do we have? 4,100 plus, 4250 plus um, 4500 so that gives me for those of you that like precise numbers 12,850 okay so that's the total that we've spent and it's nowhere near our $20,000 range but now you've averaged your prices which is fantastic because now you have 50 shares at 90, you have 50 shares at 85, and 50 shares at 82. So your price average for these shares is somewhere right around, let's see, what do we have? $85.66, that's what I got. Um, as far as the math goes, of course, uh, you can do your own calculations. But anyways, we're right around the $85 range here for our average, and now we have a time horizon that we're looking at basically from this September timeframe 
for September of next year. Okay, so now we're allowing things to ride and not everything is going to work out perfect. As you can see, sometimes we come back over here and this gives me right around the $95 price range and then they come back around here about $108 price range. But overall, my prediction was correct and this worked out really well on the accumulation part. It allowed me to gain those shares at a cheaper price, average out my position and buy things at lower prices. Again, did it in thirds, you could do it in quarters, you could do it in halves. If you have less money, sometimes you just do it twice. If you have more money, you could do it in five, six, seven, ten times. And that's how the big money managers do it is they, they continue to accumulate sometimes day in or week on, on end and they continue to build out that account. Now, this obviously works out really well because I can see the future here on this chart, but um, but what happens if we do it in a different way? So, however, let's take a look at if you did this completely bad because accumulation is there to kind of save us a little bit from a bad mistake. And I want to share with you really where the risk or reducing your risk through accumulation can really help save you um, even if you put on a really horrible trade initially. So let's just say you got into the trade somewhere around this level and we can say 133 since it's all, almost at the highs, okay? So here, if I go 50 shares again, let's just say 50 shares, multiply that times 133, we're going to get 6650, uh, 6650, okay? So that's going to be our, um, our total that we've spent right there on that position. Okay, we still haven't spent our full $20,000, but now you see things rolling over right here. And as you see things rolling over, you probably wanna say, hey, let me wait, let me see if I can get it at lower prices. And if you see things here coming in and bouncing, even if you caught it at the highs right here, okay, this is your next step of accumulation. You say, hey, things are going higher, let me accumulate. So now you're accumulating at about uh, 122. Let's say 122. So again, 50 shares times uh, 122 gives me 6,100. Okay, so now I have a few shares at 133. I have a few shares at 122. Stock, again, rejects those prices, comes back lower. And I say, man, this it's just tearing me apart you know, and then it pops higher, comes back lower. So by now you can see it's bouncing off of this price level. So the first one you probably wouldn't be able to see. Second one, you might have been able to see it. Uh, third one, you should be able to see it. And you say, okay, I'm gonna buy it right there at the 115, 116 price level. So if you went ahead and bought a little bit more, again, call it 50 shares just to make numbers easier at about 115, that gives you 5,750. So 5,750 on, uh, on that position. So all in all, if you take the average between these, okay, and we just do a simple average, say 115 plus 133 plus 122, that gives us uh, 370. Okay, so 370, divide that by three, and we get a price point of 123.33. So that puts us now somewhere right around this price level. So you can see the difference of where we're at is not very different from being all the way up at the top at 133. Because if I put in all my money at $133, okay, it would basically pin me to having that stock have to go up 100, up to 133. In this case, since I've averaged down, which is not always the best approach to average down, okay, but if you do it in stages, kind of through accumulation, and you've planned for this in advance, you understand that you're reducing your risk over the period of your, the time of your investment. Normally I say do not average down on your positions because what people normally do is they put in 100% of their position right there at the beginning. 
they put in everything. They put in the full $20,000, they put in the full $10,000, whatever it is that they have initially right there at the beginning. And when they do that and things sell off, now they try to double down, they get more money, they need more money, and they try to add on to this position as things are heading higher, which does help, but you don't have a plan in mind. Here, when you look at it, you can see the plan that I have in mind. My plan right here is to do it in thirds, just like I mentioned earlier, three times. I'm going to do it three times, and now right there is what I need the stock to get into to break even. Now, I could set my stop, and my stop could be right here, that big point where that 115 is. If it gets below that, I'm out, I take my losses, and so on. But it's not as bad as, uh, you know, as bad as being all the way up at the 133 level. Now, the other advantage to this is that if I'm looking into uh, this price point, you have to remember that I'm accumulating shares, 50 shares, right here at 115. So again, let's take a look at, um, at this. So if I have 50 shares at 115, we have uh, 57.50 invested. So that's what we have invested. Now keep in mind, these 50 shares, I could go ahead and peel them off to take some profits, again, to reduce my risk. Because again, now I'm thinking about, okay, what's my risk? I have these 50 shares that I can use to make money on to be able to make up the difference for these shares at the 133. So separate those things. So if you can separate those things from your mentality, from your psychology, and you can say, okay, well, this went up about $4, $4 times 50 shares, so here I have $4 multiplied times 50 shares, you get $200 in profit. So that right there helps you make up the difference. And again, you're reducing your risk because now you only have uh, the 50 shares remaining from this part and the 50 shares remaining from this part. And again, if it rolls back over and goes lower, you can buy back the original 50 shares from the 115 price level. I know it may sound confusing, but you're, you're basically using the 50 shares from that 15 price point to constantly roll them, to constantly make money from them as that stock heads lower and bounces, heads lower and bounces up until you can either make up the difference for these uh, other shares or up until you get out from a stop, if that is your stop. So all these things really come with making a plan in mind. And you can see how the accumulation stage really helps you um, reduce that risk based on your time horizon, especially if you're looking at a year plan right here. The difference is we're going from October to about January. It's only a three month uh, time frame right now. So we still have uh, about six, seven months to make up those differences. Now, if it, if it he heads into month four and five and I'm still struggling in month four and five, probably best to just get out of the position. If you don't see things turning around, sometimes it's just better to put your money elsewhere. But in general, you can see what I'm doing here is that I can either stair step on the way up, and that's my accumulation, and then allow me to make money from the uh, constant uptrend that's going to happen. But the bigger thing to learn from this is that if things continue to head lower, I can average into my position so that way when things do reverse, because they do eventually, not every time, but if you're picking the right stocks, if you're looking for a longer term investment, if they're paying out dividends, it helps you make up those differences. And that way, even if you get stuck in the last one or two uh, positions, you can use them to make up the difference with those bounces, okay? And you're averaging into them. But obviously, the key point to learn here and understand is that you don't put 100% of your position all in that one spot, okay? If you put it all in on that one spot, 100%, and you do it from the beginning, that's where people get in trouble, and that's why you don't double down on a losing position because you already put 100% of your, your money in here. Now you're just trying to double down to make up the losses uh, from earlier. But if you already come in with a plan saying, hey, I'm going to accumulate in stages, it allows you to reduce that risk 
because of splitting things into time. But you have to know your investment horizon for that. And you can do this across multiple stocks. It's hard to overlay this with charts um, and draw at the same time. But let's say you had another stock chart just to clear the screen here. And in one stock you bought in, in May and July and say September. And the other stock you bought in June, August and October. So now you start looking at, okay, I've done accumulation three times, okay, in every stock, but I've staggered also the months and the different positions. So you have two stocks, each one accumulating three times and alternating months. So you could do things that way as well. Keep in mind now you start getting into multi-level diversification and accumulation, but that's where you can take things further. Uh, my goal here was to share with you the accumulation process and why you're accumulating over time. It's very rare that I personally, even if I see a stock, let's just say I see this stock right here breaking out and I know it's bouncing because right here, classic pattern of support, even if I see it bouncing, if you're looking at a shorter time frame, it's very rare I'm going to get in 100% of my position on the first day. Very rare. Why would I put in 20,000 shares on the first day when I could put in 5,000 shares here, 5,000 shares here, 5,000 shares here? That's perfectly fine because I'm letting the stock prove to me and then I take the 5,000 from this first position and I take those profits off over here. And then as it continues to move higher from this position, I may take off profits here. And then this third position, I could just let it sit and let it build upon. And I can, okay, add back from the first or second trade again, back when it bounces again. It's a rotation, it's dynamic, trading is dynamic. And I hope you see that. It's a little confusing drawing it on screen, but I hope it's giving you a bigger picture, maybe on paper, it would be a little bit easier uh, if I printed out the charts, but here you get to see a live chart example. So you're basically rotating things through. Even if you're doing swing trading, you can see how this works out because you, know, you go in one day, two day, or third day, uh, fourth day, but now you're taking the profits from here over in this one. Then you're taking the profits of this one over here. And this one, you might let it sit because now you are you have those 50 shares you've built up, but you're still constantly taking profits. And then again, you start reaccumulating, okay? And now from this one, okay, that you accumulated, you take profits over here, okay? Or you continue the accumulation process. And then as you start seeing it weaken off, which might come over in this area, you take the profits, okay? You take profits from that first one. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, is that your goal ultimate is to accumulate to reduce your risk, okay? Don't put in 100% of your shares or 100% of your position right away because you don't know if that second day, third day, fourth day is gonna be a down day or if the trend is going to change up. That's why you stagger those things because it allows you to reduce the risk based on the time, okay? So hopefully that makes sense for you. And I hope you got that takeaway to understand that trading is really dynamic and that you can really think about breaking apart even your positions that you put on, position number one, position two, position three, and start trading off of those to psychologically reduce the risk for yourself. So thanks for sticking with me. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more training videos like this one, uh, click the thumbnail over here and you'll continue watching. But if you wanna get on my newsletter list and attend those free live uh, classes, then uh, click the link over on this side or the button. And you'll be taken to that sign up page where you can enter your name and email address. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.